Okay, and we are back with the amazing Dr. Richard Allen Miller. Rick, to those who know him. Now, uh, I, I'm going to do this again. And for those of you listening, dear listeners, please forgive me, but Rick doesn't know this. I, during the uh, 90s, Rick, I was working all the time, kind of like I am now, actually. I never watched. I haven't had television for 20, 20, 27, 20, 27 years. Uh, I did not watch. I don't say anything yet. I did not watch the X Files. About mm, three months ago, I bought the the whole set. Okay, <laughs> and I started. I started watching it, and I have never had more fun watching TV. This is, I do it after work at night, two a.m. But I've never had. I save one episode a night, like kind of like a dessert, and it it's a kick. There's some really really amazing stuff in there and you know i understand a little bit about the x-files well i i did the i did the work up in the first eight episodes if you'll, you'll see my name on them <laughs> i did the first ones and then i worked with carter up in uh, bc as an advisor when they would walk into a top secret room what would it look like well it has a desk over there and i bought a dot you know i would be the guy that would tell them how it would look and how set it director go. i got it among other things well, not a set director i'm just an advisor you know yeah. having done it you know i've been there done that you know it's interesting back then um the reason i chose not to be the writer and they brought carter in yeah. is that my team in the original one and i send you the work up had nine nine members and it was uh called psyops uh-huh. and um basically if i had forensics i had this i had that i had a tracker an indian tracker you know if you had to go in the woods oh, yeah. um they wanted a smaller budget because they didn't think no X Files was going to go, and so they only wanted two people. And I didn't know how to write it that way because I always had deep pockets. I and, got it. Uh, and I didn't want to live in Hollywood. Holly weird, excuse me. Oh, yeah. And I have to tell you, I just came back from Hollywood, and I can't get it. I, I really. I uh, don't know what it is that anybody would want to live there like that. Damn good question. It's, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there's a, it does, now there's your aliens and zombies, man. Uh, you know, uh, in values. And uh, what's it, important? It's a freak show. Yeah. Well, it's different. It's not a freak show. It's different. And, you know, the American dream, the only way I figure you can do the American dream is if you're asleep. <laughs> and it's all, uh, it, the whole thing's nuts. That's and, good. Um, about yeah. everybody yeah, drives right. a hot end car. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, it's just different. It's just uh, the money thing. It's only four hundred and fifty uh, a month or so to, to lease one. No problem. Don't worry. About it. I okay. So I got taken on my birthday to Yamashiro's. That was a really nice experience. And uh-huh. right below it is a thing called the Magic Castle. And the Magic Castle is for stage magicians that are you know all over the country. Oh, it's still there. Yeah, artists. it's been around for a long time. Okay. Okay. So I I never knew anything about it. So. This one guy taking my workshop is called the Hollywood Lawyer, and he's Japanese, and he says, let me look into it. Now, they have a standing room uh, in a line, uh, waiting waiting line, of uh, six weeks into the future. And so, and this was Friday night, and I wanted to go Saturday night after the workshop. And what he did, he found six people that canceled. And the owner came over to the table. And uh, it costs like $35 just to get inside the place, not even talking about your valet, car valet, uh, you know, the guy's parking your car and you got to tip him and and Uh Uh meals start at $40 up. And it was fake. So the owner comes up to me, sees this little button on my lapel, and he says, well, you're not a member of our club, but but Mm -hmm. that looks like a magic lodge. And I said, yeah, oh, yeah, this is OTO. Uh, This is magic with a K. And he says, what's the difference between magic with a C and magic with a K? And I said, well, you're sleight of hand, and I'm sleight of mind. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching people how to change the movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say something now. When I train Navy SEALs, the single most important survival tool was attitude. Uh, there is on Netflix a uh, three-hour uh, series called Remote Survival, where they have six people mm-hmm. dropped in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. with some experts to help you walk around to find your fire and your mm-hmm. water and da-da-da-da-da. Mm-hmm. And 
the two of six people, they have to go, you know, so far in a three day period before they're extracted. And two people failed. And both of them failed, not because there wasn't water or food or heat. It was because they couldn't do it. I.e., huh. I couldn't drink that water. Uh-huh. It's colored. I got it. Yeah, that, and it's the attitude which caused... See, the prime directive all, was missing. Well, that's right. The problem is, uh, if you you never get... How, you know, remember Galaxy Quest, never give up, never give up. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the... Okay. There is nothing more overrated than unrewarded genius, and there's nothing more underrated than persistence. And it's that persistence. Let me give you an example. Well, well you, hold on, hold on. You just said some really great stuff. You're so right. It doesn't matter if you've got a 200 IQ if you don't use it. you got a 140 IQ and you're working overtime. You're going to walk right past those other people. Good job. I don't know about that. <laughs> but, okay, so this one guy has to make a fire. He, it's going to get cold and he's got to get it started right. and there's no matches. How does he do it? He pulls his shoelace apart and uh-huh. twi- you know wraps it around two sticks and for two hours he's welding this thing back and forth trying to create enough heat to get the tinder to light. Wow. And he at two hours and it's nothing's happening. And the, and he's about ready to give up and the guy at the other end, the mic, the expert guy that's somewhere off on the moon giving uh-huh. him that advice. Uh-huh. What is that you're looking at? You know, oh, that save that. That's important. Okay. So that guy says, just do it a little bit longer. And just because he said that, the guy did it, and it, that's when it caught fire. I'll be it there. is always when you don't expect it. It has to do with the moment, and you don't think about it. Now, the new book I have out, the workbook, too, that just came out, has an opening statement that says, At, uh, everything works out in the end. If things aren't working out, it's not yet the end. Good. Another good line. Yeah, yeah. That's the way I train sales. Listen, it is about your attitude and the fact that you don't give up. You just keep persisting because you know it's going to work. Now, that's why you practice so that you know why you don't want to give up. That's how you you succeed in life, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You don't quit. Yeah, you can't. It's not about quitting. It's about the journey and yeah, all the yeah. different nuances of it. Yeah. Very okay, good. Well, that was my whole thing for the day. Have well, I? that's good. That's outstanding. Now, tell me about... Well, it's uh, about your attitude. I would say that that's what structures the water in your body. Mm-hmm. That is how psyche is brought into matter. Well, we know Emoto uh, proved it. I mean, if you have, and it's all electromagnetic stuff, if you think right, your electrical magnetic field will shape the water in your body and you'll harmonize. Yeah, I'm, I don't know how that all works. Jerry Pollack, that wrote all of that, the exclusions on water, the uh, fourth phase of water, was my lead in 1970. Huh. And Jerry, now there's been some brand new discoveries in water since that book came out. Huh. Exclusions on water is H302. And really, what that is, is the water that surrounds a cavitation bubble when a drop of water hits a big pool of water. And what happens is you get a little bubble that pops back up a little bit, except uh-huh. that it's not solid water. Right. What it is, is exclusion zone water that has trapped the medium that it's in, and that is called cavitation, and it has a kind of metaphor of a topological surface mm-hmm. of a black hole going into a white hole. And mm-hmm. time is the waves going outward as the future and the actual waves that go inward and slap each other is what creates the exclusion zone water and that's your past which is a primary wave and when you talk to your future the way that you do that is that you have five things in front of you and only one of them has significance the reason you're discovering the one is significant is how your future is talking to your present to change the past and that's time travel. And the metaphor is your angel, yours, Jeff Rance, is a woman in the future that is everything that you are not, that complements and makes you that as a black hole going into a white hole. And that's a metaphor. That's how you look at time. 
Mm-hmm. That's how you look at the Earth. That means there's a double ganger Earth. And oh, guess what? There turns out that almost all star systems are binary, and we've got one too. And that's called Nibiru, and the planet 7X, and the thing that's causing the things in the sun, and why Rome, and uh, NASA, and all the rest of them have been putting all those birds up to take a look say. Uh-huh. And it's not that easy to see things, even though you think it would be out in space. It's uh, big. Well, you'd think that the IFR scope in uh, Arizona, among other things, that owned by the Catholic Church would be able to see it, you'd think. Well, uh, listen, this slant that I did yesterday in Hollywood about the giants being discovered, giant skulls being discovered in Pennsylvania, she's covering it as if it were a cover-up. Who would do that? Ah, huh. where? Well, wait a minute. Now, the were they are talked about all through the Bible? You know, there's, uh-huh. uh, there's yeah. oh, they're giants. Uh, of course, they're giants. And, and yeah. the Nephilim. And, yeah. Okay, it goes on and on. But they're discovering this everywhere. Why is that not out in the public and part of the dots we are allowed to connect? And well, who is controlling that? And my guess was the Roman Catholic Church mm-hmm. doesn't want you to know that there are other kinds of humans they don't want us from to know a either. different star mm-hmm. system that is mm-hmm. a binary to us that goes out toward Rigel. Were these whole uh, whole skeletons or just skulls piled up? All of the above. They find uh, in Russia, they found whole, whole skeletons. They are mm-hmm. finding burial mounds in various parts of Pennsylvania, uh-huh. and these are all done by very scholarly people in the 1800s when mm-hmm. there was no such concept as aliens mm-hmm. from that point of view. Mm-hmm. We didn't even have aircraft back then when they were discovering these in the 1860s. And let me say this these skulls are huge. They're seven and a half, eight foot giants. Me they grew up in a different gravity system or something. Mm -hmm. And so with all of that said, there's a lot more going on here than any of us know. And at my pay grade, I know there's a high likelihood I'll probably never know what really happened. Probably. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I well, don't know about that part. We've I seen that the Roman Catholic Church is going to be the last pope because when this nonsense gets out, oh. how they've been covering up. I'll tell you. Um, this guy is a, this guy is a, a real lot creep. Of information with breakaway technologies yeah. and who did it and what did it and what are the Nephilim and the Anunnaki and the da 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 da. I have no clue, but I continue finding references in all different kinds uh-huh. Uh-huh. of media. Uh, in France, there are caves in France uh-huh. that will have a bison, you know, cave, painted by some caveman, except uh-huh. Uh-huh. The ca- ca- that bison has a bunch of dots around its eye that are precision orientation of star maps, and it gets better. And the cave uh-huh. over there, and they're in reverse, indicating uh-huh. that those star maps were made from space. And we have lots of different uh, li- in, uh, things from India with uh-huh. different kinds of flying craft and other kinds oh, yeah. of yeah, 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 yeah. previous epochs. And there's no question that there is a type of false flag dissolution of distractions with ISIS beheading people over here and well, let's have a war over there because it's good for business when oil prices are down. Right. Listen, I, the whole thing is a mess and, I, and, and as far as politics go, it's an embarrassment and a disgrace and somebody needs to say it publicly. Yeah. And the more I'm going to say it, I'm hoping other people start talking to their neighbors about it because your voting card is right in your hand right now in Oregon, and it's an embarrassment. Did I get my voting? Candidates that are running. Did I get my ballot already? You got it probably today. Oh, huh. all right. I'll have to find trust, it. Trust me, it's, it's too, okay? But that's what, in Jackson County, you're in Jackson County. Mm-hmm. We're in Josephine. Listen, it's an embarrassment. And I'm looking at all the hoods that are running at different levels of Congress. And they're all criminals. But we've been looking at the same thing ever since JFK was killed, Rick. Listen, uh, 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 what's it, Bill Clinton has a special bridge going across Arkansas into Mexico to bring the cocaine across. It's got in wraps at either end and his name on the bridge. I have a federal judge 10 years older than me that's saying he's the worst criminal out of Arkansas. And now he's got his wife running for president? 
Well, what we need is eight more years of the Clintons, exactly. Thank you for that. Well, uh, eight more years of Donald Trump? Yeah, wait, listen, I'll take Trump over the Clintons any day. This woman is campaigning on the woman's card. How many of the rape victims did she stand up for that her husband had uh, violated? I am not going to vote against something by voting something else that's just as bad. Well, you won't vote then. I do it all. Yes, I will. I'm going to find some way of protesting because the two Republican parties that are trying to stop Trump and uh, Democratic Party, you know, it's uh, you betcha time. It's bullshit. And uh, vote for Jack Benny. Realize, vote for Jack. Offered any, this is why they say there's not going to be an election. Oh, there's but going to be an election. election. The whole thing's like set up candy can. Did you see the story I ran on the Diebold machine? Or die bowl. No, I didn't. Yeah, I it's didn't. another ex- <laughs> example. It's all, it's all fixed. All of it. All of it. You want to follow a good one? American Odyssey on Netflix is about ISIS, Osama bin Laden, and how they assassinated the SEAL Team Six. And when you oh, talk that's about pretty pretty this disgusting. Is no longer the country I served and protected. No, it's not. Not at all. It's not. I would have nothing. I'm embarrassed. I'm about to go over to Europe. I'm going to meet with Zen Gardner and some others over there in Amsterdam. Uh-huh. And uh, uh-huh. listen, I am embarrassed as an ugly American. What is Zen doing over there? I thought he was in South America. No, he's in Prague right now. Or I'm supposed to meet him. Oh, in he's Prague he's in he's July. visiting. He's visiting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, very He's good. very cool. He's actually a way better writer than I am. I'm more nerdy. His prose are exceptional. I like his writing, so... He's an, I, he's I, an, I run a lot of his stuff. He's a very good writer. Yeah, yeah he's articulate. I, I just... It's a, it's a shame that at my level of awareness, there are people making decisions on my best interest. So, right. They're making all the decisions. Come on. You, and, and, you, you have no power. Neither do I. Yeah, well, the one percenters are trying to get rid of the three percenters right now with those Iceland tapes. There is a website that I think is very cool called hangthebankers.com. That's kind of neat. a good one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that goes back to Bush 41. He said, if the people really knew what we were doing, they'd drag us out in the streets and hang us. What we need is a Nuremberg with accountability. Yeah, none of the, those were monkey trials. We need real trials. Come on. Yeah, a real one. Where yeah. there's accountability on these kinds of things. Just in Sarajevo, and what happened there? My God. Yeah. Well, that was the Clintons again, spreading radiation uh, right and left. And people there got cancer, they well, died. now you can enjoy it on a more local level. <laughs> I wouldn't want to live in New York City right now with Indian Point and what it's doing with Hudson. Oh, my God. Well, how about east of Hanford? You mentioned Hanford earlier. You know, all, the guy said, yeah, well, I ran the story. He and said, and they, there's a whole cemetery full of babies with no brains in their skulls. No. There's, uh, and those uh, uh, SARS and some of the other things where the skull is too small and the brain pops because it has nowhere to go. Correct. That and there's uh, creepy. Yeah, there's creepy things. Well, going it's a, it's a d- 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 war on uh, our genetic uh, history, our heritage. War on our genetic future. War. The, the war is on genes. Well, basically. okay, that's NASA and the secret uh, the weapons. And don't forget Google. Google. Yeah. Google. Yeah. yeah, Google's in on it. Don't kid yourself. They had yeah, more visits yeah, to the White House. All Go- of them, yeah. Do you but know that Google has visited the White House more than anybody else in the seven and a half years we've been saddled with the Oreo cookie? 470 some visits, weekly visits in nearly eight years by Google execs to the White House. Once a week. What the hell is that about? 